this is the question. So describe five types of procedures for obtaining all the evidence. That's one. Then once you have described them, that says for each procedure, describe an example relevant to the audit of PPE. That is what we want to look at now. So what are the types of audit evidence procedures? Any we have one? the inspection. Inspection, thank you. Recalculation. Inspection, recalculation, thank you. Analytical procedures. Analytical procedures, takes. Inquire. Inquiry, awesome. Reperformance. Reperformance, fantastic. Reperformance. So let's look at inspection. What is inspection? It's auditor's attempt to physically see the asset or document to substantiate or to yeah <laughs> to substantiate or confirm the existence of a transaction. That's it. That's general description. So this answered the I part of the question. Sorry. And now we can go to the B part of the question. So we're going to have two sections, I and II. So I is general description. Then II is the one that is relevant to the PP itself. The question wants us to be able to link that to PP. So once we finish describing for general, we're now going to PP. So let's do that now. Now for PP, tell me, how can we use inspection for PP? Physical inspection. So going back to the procedure on inspection for PPE. So an example where you can adopt inspection to audit PPE is when auditor do, auditors are doing physical inspection of PPE by the auditor to confirm existence, existence of the asset. That is one way, but it doesn't end there. Still on inspection, I mean, one is fine. Don't get it wrong. One is fine. I'm just giving you more. So whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, require. So likewise, um, let's, let, how do I put this one? So document. So when you look at invoice to actually confirm accuracy of valuation of PPE, purchase of PPE is also an inspection. So we we'll say, Inspection of inspection of purchase invoices to agree the balance in the GL with the amount on the invoice in order to obtain comfort on accuracy of uh, assets of PPE balance, of PPE purchase. That's also inspection. So it doesn't have to really be physical inspection of the asset itself or of inventory, which we are talking of inventory. But likewise, you can actually inspect invoices. Very important. Right. Recalculation. Your explanation of recalculation should be an approach, yeah, that involves 
I will use recomputation so that you avoid using the same word. And a product involves recomputation of figures in order to check mathematical. That is what you are checking. It's not the accuracy of the of the final figure itself, but the mathematical accuracy of what has led to the figure. Mathematical accuracy of the balance. I hope this is making a lot of difference for you. This is what makes this one different. There are figures and what you are checking with mathematical accuracy. And a typical example where you can use this in audit of PPE is the calculation of depreciation charge and comparing with the GL to ensure that they are not signally different. Yeah. So I just edit the words there, the calculation of depreciation and comparing with the GL balance. The GL balance to ensure that they are not kind of different. Yeah, yeah, they are checking for accuracy. Yeah, and that's it. Analytics analytics is about forming independent expectation about auditors. Let's rather know is forming that expectation about auditors forming independent uh, expectation. And comparing with the actual, with the intention of investigating, investing. You to, if there's any material difference, remember you must investigate. You ask the client to explain why investigating any material difference. You can see for audit is all about materiality. We don't have time to be looking at everything. So it has to be a material difference. If I form his expectation and I have, I expect to see five and uh, what you have is four. I can say it's not material and I move on. And I say it is it's okay. So that's analytics. It's about Auditors forming independent expectation. This is the word here that must always be in you talking about analytics in any audit. But how can you use this? How can you use this in audit of PPE? Like I told you last week, what are your major benchmarks when you are doing analytics? Tell me. Who can remember? I think I gave you three or so or four. What you can use to form the type of analytics you can do based on this, the source of your expectation. They compare it. With what? PA? Comparing right. previous year's financial statements and to assess year on performance. Year. Good, year on year. That is trend. Good. That's trend analytics. Good. What else? Benchmarking to industry so to industry fantastic fantastic industry that's benchmarking good which one again more i think we have four so three that we spoke about last week yeah, variance analysis variance analysis fantastic and here you are looking at the budgets and can be the calculation, auditor's calculation. I think that was the last one. When they use both financial and non-financial data together. Yeah, and that's that's still analytics. Yeah, that's auditor's analytics. Fantastic. So out of all of this, which one can you use for PPE from these different types you have. You can use almost a lot of them. You can use year on year on depreciation. In fact, we can pick that. 
You can as well use industry for the deposition policy. Budget as well for purchases. We want to audit PPE that has been purchased. You can say, I don't have time to start asking for documents. Yeah, or maybe you just want to, you've done your risk assessment. Remember I told you last week that before you can do substantive analytics, terms and conditions apply. <laughs> and I gave you those two conditions. Number one, control must be good. If control is not good, you cannot use substantive analytics because it means that you need to do a lot of work if control is not good. And substantive analytics is not a lot of work. It's more like an efficient way of doing the audit. Yeah, and the risk of overstatement must be low. So if you, if control is fine and people is, I don't want to do test of details. So you don't want to do recalculation. You can say, I go to the budget and I check on the budget. What did they budget as 2024 purchases of PPE? You pick it you form your expectation. That is your expectation. Now you can now go into the GL, the financial statement, and say, what is the figure on addition? If they are similar or equal or almost equal, you are good. You've done analytics and it's unquestionable. Likewise, you can say you want to recompute the precision and use that as your expectation for your analytics. That is what you are doing. So you can use any of these four to do analytics. So tell me which one do you want us to choose? I've explained how you can apply all of them. Just tell me which one should I use. Choose one for me. So I choose the first one since everybody's quiet. <laughs> so I choose year on year. Okay, so let's see. So here, adopt the prior year depreciation figure as the expectation for current year. After, obviously you have to adjust for disposal and addition in the current year. So you can say, that is my expectation. I, I, I expect last year depreciation to be the same as this year depreciation. Once I take out items that have been disposed and I add back the new items that have been added that should be my depreciation instead of me recalculating the deposition for all the assets i'm just going to take the bulk big figure from last year and make the two adjustments for disposal and addition and that's what i expect you to have if it's not that then i'm going to request request management to explain significant significant difference between the expectation and the GL balance. I hope this makes sense to you. Yeah, so that's how you can adopt analytics for PPE there. As straightforward as that. Inquiry is another process. What is inquiry? What is the inquiry? Sorry, dial for um the analytics. When you said um variance, how would yeah. you use variance to review PPE for the budget? Okay. Sorry. Yeah, let's go. So that's okay. So what I said there is remember when you're talking of PPE, PPE is opening balance plus additions, which is purchases, less disposal less depreciation and you have your closing balance that you put on the financial statement yeah so this is plus this is less is less and then equals to this yeah this is your ppe and anytime you are asked to audit ppe as a whole or the balance yeah actually every item here must be audited in, in addition to other things you are doing, yeah, the closing balance, you audit it, 
based on those assertions, existence, and all of that. But your accuracy comes from your addition, your valuation, right? So if you are doing test of details, remember substantive test is can be either test of details <coughs> or analytics. Yeah. Yeah. This is what people do mostly, test of details, because they don't like to think. In fact, in audit space, if you are an auditor that likes to do test of details, you are seen as less intelligent. Because usually is the easiest one to do. You're just looking for document, 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 document. And you're going to spend your whole budget. You're going to finish all the money we're supposed to make as an auditor, wasting your time charge and all of that, checking document. We don't like people doing test of details. So take, for instance, for addition, if you want to do test of details as your substantive, you'll be asking for invoices. However, you can decide to do analytics for addition. And Using your question as an example, budget is an example of analytics, various analysis. You just say, guys, can I have your budget for 2024? They give you the budget. Then you look into the budget. You go straight to the line on addition to PPE. What did they budget to spend on additions to PPE? 25 million. Then you say, I expect this figure to be 25 million. That is what you are saying. If this figure is not 25 million, then you have to calculate the difference. If the difference is material, then clients have to explain. Then that is why you now go to test of details. If you are satisfied at this point, you don't need to go to test of details again. In the practical sense, that is how it works, right? So, but in audit exams, you are only just required to, at least to know whether test of details or analytics, you must know how to do both of them. So if you want to use variance analysis for PP, you can use it for additions using the budget. If you want to use for depreciation, you can use your own calculation, your own analytics, yeah, to, to estimate what depreciation should be. Or you can even use benchmarking for depreciation, which means you are benchmarking the depreciation policy to the industry and to be sure that it's the same thing that they are doing. And year on year as well, you can adapt it to depreciation to say, depreciation should be the same thing every year except there has been disposal or addition. And it is fact. And that saves you problem, stress of doing all calculation for every asset. Because you just understand that basically speaking, the position should be constant every year. Make adjustment for additions and disposal only. Be good. Abby? Yeah. Very clear? That's right that. Yeah, that's clear. So if... In the budget, I'm guessing yeah. the budget wouldn't have like obviously the total accurate figure because say they said they were going to spend 25 million and then they ended up buying an asset or PPE for 28. Yeah. Is that a bad thing then? Or okay. when if it is that, then how do we how would you then handle that? We'll that. Yeah. So yeah, we know that sometimes budget is an estimate. So it yeah. will never, ever be exact the same. But yeah. we don't expect it to be significantly different. That's why I use the word oh, significant. Okay. Yeah. 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 You only that's investigate good. significant difference. Yeah. And that still goes to the discussion on why our audit is always a risk-based audit. Because we don't do absolutes. We don't look at 100% sample size. We only focus on things that are material, things that are huge, things that can change the decisions of the users of the financial statement, things that are big enough to make the opinion to be different, right? So we are looking at those huge differences and not every difference will be investigated. So once you have huge difference, then it means that your analytics has been rendered useless then you have to go and start doing your test of details. Because in the, by the time you go to the clients to start explaining the difference, that or you already start going into the space of test of details because you'll now be asking for evidence document to support whatever they are saying. Because you cannot trust them again. You trusted them before because controls were good. You did analytics, but analytics have failed. Make sense? Yeah, thank you. Awesome.
Okay, so back to uh, types of substantive testing. You can see analytics is just one here. All of these are test of details, these ones that you're seeing here, apart from those analytics, the calculation inspection, they are all examples of test of details, all of them. This is the only one that is substantive analytics. Inquiry, worst form of evidence. So this is about speaking to the client to obtain understanding, yeah? Understanding or knowledge about a transaction. Yeah. <coughs> And how can we adapt this when we're doing audit of PP? Ask the management if there has been, you give us a change, right? In the depreciation policy. Another one which came to my mind before was, yeah, I mean, I do it all. If the uh, one is fine, I'm just giving another one. There has been a uh, disposal during the year. And that is that. Reperformance. Performance is almost the same thing as recalculation. Yeah, it's very similar to recalculation. But I'll, I'll put it as recalculation. Instead, um, I will rather add um, confirmation here. So this involves obtaining information from third party to support existence existence of rights or obligation about assets or liability yeah that is confirmation so and for pp i'll help you with this one yeah remember when but when your clients when they take loan sometimes that loan will require collateral so some of your client could have used pp as collateral to loan and under a 16 any asset that has been used as collateral must be appropriately disclosed right so that's another inquiry that you can make here to inquire from the management if any of the asset has been used as collateral, that is inquiry again. But in terms of confirmation here, what you do is you can send a letter to the bank because this must come from a third party. If any of the client's assets, let's call it PP, not the general client, client PP has been used as collateral. Collateral is like security for loans. Right. And that's a confirmation we've done there. I hope, let me save this. So please, I would like to ask, uh, with this uh, uh, method or ways of get, gaining or uh, gathering other evidence, yeah. if you are asked to explain in terms of their reliability level. Yes. Can you please uh, explain to us in, in such a manner which one is more re reliable? And then... you know, very good question you're asking there. Very good question. And I'll take you back to the last class when we spoke about reliability. What are the things that factors that influence reliability? Who remembers? reliability of audit evidence. What are those factors? Because that's how we're going to use to arrange them. Anyone, anyone? Yeah, I because go. I know I know we dealt with it last class. 
reliability. So um, we can take a look at um, where it was obtained from and also the kind of, um, of evidence. Thank you. Thank you very much. It said it's about source and nature, and we just killed it. Yeah. So now let's look at it. We already said that reliability is about source and nature. This nature is about whether we are looking at original documents or photocopy or oral or written evidence. So this might not really help us to answer your question. But this source is where we might get a lot of help for people to arrange those procedures in order of reliability. And source, we said there's hierarchy. The most important, which is like the best one, is when it's from the auditor themselves. Next is from the third party. And the worst is from the client. Now, if we go into all of these procedures, yeah, five of them, it means that the best one will be the one from the auditor. This is third party. So anyone that is from the auditor will rank it number one. Which one do you think will qualify us from the auditors there, from this process that we have written, that auditors have done themselves? Recalculation. So Fantastic. Inspection, recalculation, all of these are rated one, right? Because Auditors calculated, auditors inspected themselves. Yeah, analytics is a combination of auditors and the clients. So I can we can rank this maybe 1.5. Inquiry obviously is the worst, number three. Then confirmation is from the third party. So we'll rank in number two. So you can already see the ranking. So inspection, recalculation, they are both extremely solid. If one must come on top of the other, which necessarily you will never have to do that because they are addressing different things. This is accuracy, this is existence. Yeah, but they are both top notch in their space. Right. Yeah. So, but if you must take one on top of, yeah, like one, put one on top, I will put inspection on top. And I'll tell you why. I will put inspection on top because I'm just seeing the asset itself and I've seen the asset. Recalculation, I will still need to use some information from the client, like depletion policy and all of that. So that's just the only reason. But I'll just rank them inspection, recalculation, analytics, confirmation, and inquiry will be the last. Albert, does it make sense? I hope I've answered your question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. 